In addition to highlighting city departments, we also are featuring organizations and individuals that make a contribution to our community. Today we are pleased to have Judge Paul White of the 159th District Court here to talk to us about drug court. Good morning, Judge White, and thank you for joining us here on City Hall Update. You have an ex exciting program to tell us about, and that is, is drug court. It's fairly new um, to Lufkin. You said it began in 2004. So tell me something about drug court. Well, first of all, it's an uh, extraordinarily unconventional approach in uh, criminal justice. We call it um, restorative justice, and um, it's a unique docket of special cases. These are offenders who have an underlying drug problem, mm -hmm. and they've been um, permitted to be part of the program through a plea bargain with the district attorney. And it basically involves um, very, very high-level supervision regarding about six or seven facets of their life for which they are accountable. And every week they uh, meet with the judge at night court on Thursday evenings and they are rewarded for uh, their compliance and their immediate consequences for non-compliance. And that's probably the key, immediacy of consequences uh, that promotes uh, conduct. And so how do you know they're compliant? Do they, do they take a drug test? Well, let me tell you, um, there are different components that we monitor, but every week a participant will report to a therapeutic counselor for individual therapy as well as group therapy. They will also report to a supervision officer. That's what we used to call probation officers. Okay. And uh, then they may be subject to random uh, home visits, but every week they have up to two or three uh, drug tests. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is uh, reported to me Thursday evenings before the docket call. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they'll held accountable when they, they, they come face to face with me in the courthouse. And so how long do they stay in this program until they're well? Well, it depends. Um, we have a mandatory rule that you have to have 12 months of continuous sobriety. That means uh, we have a record with our random drug testing every week uh, that they are clean. Uh, if they ever fail a drug test, aside from some consequences like going to jail maybe for the weekend or for the week or, or whatever we think is appropriate, uh, aside from those consequences, they have to start the program over. Mm -hmm. So if you go 11 months in your sobriety and you relapse with a positive drug test, and you've just re-upped for 12 months. So. Uh, there's, there's a uncertainty as to the duration in the program, although um, we've had some that completed it promptly in 12 months. Uh, that's only about 25 percent, though. Uh, generally, it's a difficult struggle to gain sobriety, and um, most will take longer than 12 months. But in this program, you're giving them the tools to help them succeed. Absolutely. Uh, we, that, that's the key to it. It's a whole person supervision. Uh, we're dealing with relationships. We literally mandate who and who they cannot be around and have relationships. We deal with their residents and where they can live and where they cannot even visit. We even ban certain communities that mm -hmm. they can't visit in our county. Uh, we monitor their health. That's a big component. Mm -hmm. uh, we literally count their pills from their doctor, make sure some of them are taking medicines who have co-occurring disorders. Uh, we require absolute attendance at their therapy sessions. That's equally as important as being in court. If they miss a, a therapy session, uh, they get sanctioned just like they didn't show up in court. Do you work with a, a, another agency for the therapy sessions? How do Thankfully, in our community, we have two uh, superlative uh, therapy organizations. One is the Berg Center. Mm -hmm. They do our phase one. That's our initial uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. And then we have ADAC, and they do phase two, and they complement one, uh, one another wonderfully. And we have uh, incredible counselors that are working with us, probably the best in, in the county. And so how is it funded? Well, uh, we receive some funding through the state, through our conventional uh, community supervision department, but it's not near enough to operate the program. We've been blessed with uh, grants from the Temple Foundation and some private donations. Uh, but it, were it not for the Temple Foundation, we would not be able to uh, continue. So how do you decide who gets to go on the program and who gets to go to jail? Well, uh, I don't decide that, first of all. Okay. For the integrity of the program, it cannot be judge-determined. Uh, it's determined by the district attorney. 
And if a district attorney thinks that someone has a legitimate, true underlying drug problem that's the, the core of their criminal problems, he will make a referral uh, for drug court. Now, we exclude certain categories of offenders automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no sex offenders. They're excluded. They're not eligible. And we do not accept offenders who have a crime of violence. So if we think someone is a public safety w risk with assaultive uh, conduct, uh, they're not eligible. And then, regrettably, we're not at the stage where we're able to take uh, alcoholic um, problems because the monitoring of alcohol use is so expensive, we cannot yet accept those. So that's generally the three categories of offenders who are not permitted, sex so, offenders, assaultive criminals, okay. and alcoholics. Why bring this to Lufkin in Angelina County? Um, is it because we're seeing a growing... Um, use of meth in the area or drugs in general or why Lufkin? Three reasons. Reason number one, uh, 80 percent of every crime in our county is referable to underlying alcohol or drug problem. It's driving our issues mm -hmm. in the criminal justice system. So you have to do something with it. Number two, um, we happen to know that if you send someone to the penitentiary, if you just do the easy thing of, mm -hmm. of uh, sending someone to the penitentiary, uh, within three years of release, it doesn't matter the length of the sentence, mm -hmm. two years or maximum, whatever it may be, within three years of release from the penitentiary, there's a 70% likelihood that that person, that's our statistics in Texas, will reoffend within three years. They'll go back. It's a revolving door. We have some statistics nationwide that show if they have a bona fide alcohol or, or drug problem, it's a 95% reoffend rate. So it's clearly a revolving door. And the third reason is there's a better alternative. And for me to be accountable to the best community in Texas, I have to be accountable to provide that better alternative. And there's a 19-year track record in America that, that offenders who successfully complete drug court, 72.5% of those will not reoffend. And so it's a better alternative, and I think I'm accountable to my fellow citizens, and we had to do it in Lufkin. Mm -hmm. We deserve it. So um, do you think that we have a drug problem here? Absolutely. Every case you see in the courthouse, 80% of them, whether it's family law, civil law, criminal law, I promise you will have some issue with the substance abuse. Doesn't matter. And that's, that's nationwide. We're not unique. That's just, that's just our culture today. So you have earned the reputation of being really tough in court. Are you, I guess you're proud of that. <laughs> I think that's great. Well, but what are some of the demands that you place on your participants? Well, when you say tough, um, there's an expression in therapy called tough love. And I hope uh, being tough is because it's appropriate under the circumstances. I'd like to also be known as being full okay. of mercy. <laughs> uh, we're merited, and I think that's what drug court is. It's, uh, it's an appropriate uh, level of mercy to deal with the problem. But uh, some of the things that we do, for example, um, as I mentioned earlier, we rigidly require compliance with certain levels of conduct, relationships. I mean, it's unheard of, I suppose, for people to think that uh, a judge will dictate who they can live with or can't live with or who they can see and can't see. But uh, we mandate that. Uh, we mandate employment. Uh, to be in drug court, you're either going to be going to school full-time or you're going to be employed full-time. So is it hard to get those people employed? Well, um, sometimes it's difficult. Thankfully, in this great community of Lufkin, we have a, mm -hmm. two major employers who have really stepped up and they take referrals and they give us priority mm -hmm. because they happen to know we have the cleanest mm -hmm. workforce in Angelina County.